Every day there are approximately 1.2 billion vehicles being driven on public roads. These vehicles provide the backbone of modern society, allowing goods and people to get to where they need to go. An important part of these vehicles is their ability to come to a stop safely, which is done by using a braking system. These braking systems are most commonly composed of a brake pad being pushed against a brake rotor by a caliper. This system converts the kinetic energy of the vehicle, due to its motion and mass, into thermal energy through friction between the pad and rotor. The bulk of the thermal energy produced is stored in the brake rotor, and must be efficiently dissipated to ensure the braking system functions as desired. The functionality of a brake rotor is difficult to tell by visual observation, it depends on several factors including material composition and physical structure. For example, the use of cheap metals such as scrap iron can result in rotor deformation, increased wear on the rotor and pad, noisy braking, and even rotor failure. In addition, the dimensions and layout of a rotor are important to its heat dissipation capabilities. Poor rotor design can result in a dangerous phenomenon known as brake fade, a decrease in braking performance resulting from repeated hard braking. Brake fade occurs when the rotor and pads reach excessively high temperatures, releasing gases which act as a lubricant between surfaces, decreasing friction and braking performance. Decreased braking performance can lead to increased stopping distances in emergencies and worse performance for race cars. Increasing the risk of injury for commuters and losing critical time in motorsport races. Given the importance of brake rotor performance, there exists a demand for a method of quickly and cheaply testing rotor designs. A tool which addresses this demand is a brake rotor simulator, using numerical analysis to simulate brake rotor heating. Using a simulator would avoid the time and costs associated with manufacturing an actual rotor and wearing it down during physical testing. The simulation of brake rotor heating due to friction was done using the ANSYS mechanical software tool. By importing the 3D geometry of a brake rotor into ANSYS, and applying ANSYS thermal analysis using calculated boundary conditions, an approximation of the heating behavior was obtained. Under the hood, ANSYS uses numerical methods to solve the simulation. Numerical methods can be defined as the solving of numerical problems by procedurally applying simple calculations. Numerical methods, as compared to analytical methods, are especially advantageous in solving this problem. They are quicker and contain simpler operations which are easier for a computer to process. They ultimately remove the complexity of finding an analytical solution. However, numerical methods have their disadvantages such as containing error as a result of the use of approximations and are prone to other sources of error such as the representation of floating point values in computers. Fortunately, the accumulation of these errors is sufficiently small to keep the results valid. ANSYS solves the brake rotor heating simulation problem by applying a heat balance equation, derived from the principle of conservation of energy. A series of nodal temperatures are calculated by this equation, and can be used to calculate other thermal quantities as well. As a result of the finite element method applied by ANSYS, a series of equations are generated and simultaneously solved. ANSYS has several solving methods available for use, but by default uses a frontal solver which was used in this simulation. A frontal method operates by assembling a global matrix simultaneously to perform Gaussian elimination, and is a common solving method for finite element analysis. Its advantages include the ability to handle large problems with limited memory resources, and create optimizations based on methods from sparse linear algebra. The first step to conduct a simulation in ANSYS is to calculate the boundary conditions for each surface. The heat flux due to friction between the caliper and the rotor disc is expressed as the product of the coefficient of friction for cast iron, the contact pressure, and the sliding velocity at the point of contact. The sliding velocity was found by taking the car's speed, dividing it by the tire radius and multiplying the result by the radius of the brake rotor. For the duration of braking, a heat flux versus time graph can be used to find an equation for the line which will be inserted into ANSYS. The heat exchange with the environment through convection is the boundary condition for the exposed region of the disc. This heat flux is expressed as the heat transfer coefficient of cast iron multiplied by the difference in ambient and current temperature. 
examining the temperature solution animation in ANSYS on the portion of the brake rotor where friction is applied, the heat dissipated through the material intuitively makes sense. The maximum temperature is concentrated in the middle section of the disc and flows to the outer edges over time. The heat flux decreases because it is dependent on the sliding velocity at the point of contact. Since the car is slowing down while braking, the sliding velocity decreases and thus the heat flux also decreases. The inner hub, which experiences convection, remains cool for the duration of the simulation. By inspection this would be correct as the hub does not experience friction and for the purpose of this idealized simulation, it does not experience heat flux due to any other factors. The results were roughly validated by means of an experiment. A 2014 Honda Civic was used to measure the temperature of the front, right brake rotor before and after sudden braking. The car traveled 50 km per hour before coming to an abrupt stop. The temperature of the rotor was measured with an infrared thermometer in two locations on the frictional section and on the center where it connected to the wheel hub. The measurements taken during the experiment were not an accurate reflection of the true temperatures at the time of braking. Since the car was traveling relatively quickly before coming to an abrupt stop, safety precautions were taken by keeping a reasonable distance between the vehicle and the group member taking measurements. As a result, the final temperatures of the brake rotor were taken a few seconds after the vehicle came to a complete stop and thus appeared to only reach a maximum of 43 degrees Celsius. The simulated version shows the maximum temperature during and immediately after braking which explains why the simulation appears to reach a maximum temperature of approximately five times the experimental result. With the current tools available, it would not be possible to safely measure the true temperature during braking. In addition to this, hand calculations for the boundary conditions that were done prior to solving the solution in ANSYS were error-prone. Rounding errors and assumptions made about the duration of the braking as well as the speed of the vehicle had to be crudely approximated. The mesh was oversimplified and the simulated model was only one-fifth of the actual model which makes the large assumption that the rotor is completely symmetrical and that the temperatures are uniform. This simulation can be expanded to include the effects of airflow in and around the brake rotor which will increase cooling and reduce maximum heat generated by friction. A greater range of real-life scenarios can be modeled, including stopping from higher speeds, effects of ABS on the brake rotor, as well as simulating brake fade. Different materials can be tested by switching material-specific properties in the simulation, and different rotor designs can be optimized to have the maximum temperature threshold. Additional features, such as brake vents, can be added into the simulation as an increased measure to cool down the brake rotor. This concludes our presentation. Thank you.